Could we have your attention, please? We need to have your attention. Uh, we would like to ask you to realize that with the graciousness of Marshall allowing us to use this room, we're now moving into a new phase of the reception where you're going to have an opportunity to meet the women's basketball coaches in just a few minutes as soon as they get here. And while we're waiting, we'd like to tell you a little bit about what's happening here and make certain that you realize that we want everybody to pick up an information form out front and leave your name and address behind. We need to ask you if you're going to talk to step outside. Hey guys, if you're going to talk, would you talk all you want to outside because we're going to try to do this in a hurry so we don't make you miss any of the men's basketball game. I know everybody really enjoyed the women's basketball game. Yay! Yay! So let me explain what we're about here. And again, let me ask you to uh, keep the noise down. I'd like to introduce my uh, vice chair here, but I call him the chair of vice. He is Dr. Ron Stallings, who's on the Board of Trustees of the University System, and I'm Sharon Lord. I serve on the Board of Trustees of the University System. And tonight, Ron and I and Carolyn Lilly and Joyce McMillan are launching, with the help of many of you who've already volunteered, a statewide effort to boost women in sports in the state. And before we go any further, I'd like for Dr. Stallings to talk about why he's involved in this and why he thinks it's exceedingly important that we support our women's uh, sports at every level. Dr. Stallings. Thank you, Sharon. And uh, certainly one thing I realized when I came on the board in uh, April and May is, is that there's some great minds and it's a very humbling experience. And, uh, another thing that I realized is that Sharon Lord is uh, there's a certain electronic or electric field around her that uh, makes things happen a lot, and uh, and I indeed uh, support the concept of uh, women's athletics, uh, as we've all read and know that uh, women's athletics is a great predictor of success in women. Uh, it's invaluable, uh, self-esteem. There's all kinds of reasons for this. Uh, uh, competition, uh, and, and as we all know, that uh, the, the buzzword is competition and uh, global economy, and, and it just certainly makes sense. I think we're uh, making uh, huge strides all over the country uh, in women's athletics, uh, and uh, it's good to be uh, kind of what I see as a surge, a waveform uh, forming, and and uh, and, and take. Uh, West, West Virginia women's athletics uh, to a different level. So it's indeed a pleasure and uh, we're going to recognize some folks here that are, that are in support and again we don't want to be late to the game. So right. thanks Sharon. Hey, don't you go away. You want to help me? Oh, I'm right here. Okay. Right. Uh, as many of you know because you picked up the information outside or received it on very short notice, we're birthing tonight the organization called the West Virginia Boost Hers, and it's spelled B-O-O-S-T-H-E-R-S, and that is men and women who want to boost women in sports and women in leadership in West Virginia. While we're waiting for the women's coaches who have promised me they'll get up here as quickly as they can, and if you haven't met Susan Walvius or Sarah Evans Moore. You really have something to look forward to. While we're waiting though, we want to acknowledge some state leaders and some men and women who have always supported women. I need to ask somebody to keep get the noise down out there. Uh, and the first person I want to mention is a man by the name of Frank Maisie. That's a name that many of you know. Frank was up at West Virginia University with Eddie passed along. I can still call him Eddie because we were in varsity club together back in the olden days. Frank Maisie talked with me after Ron and I spoke on the day we conceived of this idea. And he was so enthusiastic, he was going to provide all of you with 
free bumper stickers from his company saying, I am a West Virginia booster, and free name tags. One reason that our name tags are a little disorganized tonight, and I apologize, is because I then went away to lead a week-long seminar, and when I returned, I called Frank, and I was told, oh, he was involved in a fatal aircraft accident. I want you to know that the enthusiasm that he felt about this concept probably exceeded my own, and I just want to acknowledge Frank tonight. I know that he's here sitting on all of our shoulders, but he was key in making belie me believe that we could pull this off in just a few days. Um, I've acknowledged Ron Stallings. Uh, if you're a trustee, do we have uh, other trustees in the room? Would you just hold your hands up? Uh, Lucia James. I know I saw Lucia James. Lucia, yell at it. Say yes. Yes, there's Lucia K. Goodman. Okay, uh, we need that light back on up here. Unfortunately, you're our only light, so we'll <laughs> um, I didn't know this room would be so dark. Joe Powell was here earlier, and he went up to see the women's game. Okay, I'd like to now acknowledge a very special person that you should know about but don't. I'd like for Sherry Manning, Dr. Sherry Manning, to step up here. Now, just to give you an example of the sort of role models and leaders we have in this state that you don't know about but you will learn about through the West Virginia Boosters is Dr. Sherry Manning, who I have to look up to. <laughs> she was at Western Maryland, named to the College Sports Hall of Fame as a basketball star. She has been the president of two colleges. She currently is the CEO of ECCI here in Charleston, which is a long-distance management company that goes across 50 states. And you probably don't know she was a women's basketball star. <laughs> you may have heard that she is married to a man by the name of Charles Manning, who is a great booster of women. And I understand that Charles Manning has a job in his own right, but I can't remember right now what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Perhaps I should mention that he is the chancellor of our university system. Uh, Terry Hill. Is Terry Hill in the crowd? Come on up here, Terry. These are just a few examples of the reason it's really important for us to understand the power of women's sports and the role models in women's sports. This is Terry Hill. She's a basketball star in the seventh grade at Madison Middle School. And what we're doing is all for the Terrys of the world, and she's going to grow up to do at least what Dr. Manning does and probably more. Thank you, Terry. And has the has jo, Johanna, the uh, elementary school basketball star, she's at a basketball game, and she said, Dr. Lord, I'll come over in my uniform as soon as it's over. She may not make it in time. Okay, I'd like to very quickly recognize a person who was a first among firsts, and that is now TV star Natalie Tennant, who was the first and so far only female mountaineer up at West Virginia University. Natalie, here are you. Come on up here. I want you to just see this woman. Now, she's got a picture of a mountaineer on her lapel, and he's wonderful. He's a man. But someday, someday, we will realize that this is what a mountaineer looks like. Mountaineers come in two forms, and someday we will have statues all over the state of Native American women in leggings, they're mountaineers, of women who look like this in long uh, frontier dresses, they're mountaineers too, and we'll have statues like that. And perhaps the West Virginia Boosters Group, under the leadership of Natalie Tennant on a project like that, will teach us what mountaineers also look like, in addition to this real good-looking man. <laughs> so we've got Natalie as a leader. I'd also like to acknowledge a leader in... Yes. In... In Natalie's current field of endeavor, and that is Kathy Brown, who is another TV star, 
And one of the things you'll notice is that when they and Wendy Griffith and other women anchors are in charge of the news, we get real good coverage of women's leadership and of women's sports. And so we want to acknowledge their leadership, and we're really proud of you. I know of some of the personal challenges some of these women have had along the way, and I just want to say, as my Aussie friends would say, good on you, you're doing real good. Did I miss any, any news on this? Okay, where are the cheerleaders? Okay, well, tell the cheerleaders to come on in. I mean, I know what hard work cheerleading is. <laughs> Especially when they won't let girls in the band. That's what it was like in the olden days. We've got some men and women, some men and women who really do support women's sports. And these cheerleaders are a little biased. shot because we don't have equal representation here from Marshall. But I would like for you to realize the important role that the men and women who do this job play. We tease a lot about cheerleaders. It is hard work. They go out in the rain. They go out in the cold. They jump up and down when they don't feel like it. And they don't get the recognition that some of the other varsity uh, lettering people do. So this is an example of the sort of hard workers we have supporting women's sports at all universities and all levels. You all stick around. Don't go away and thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. I'm sorry we didn't get the uh, Marshall cheerleaders up here. It's probably my fault and I just don't realize what I did wrong. <laughs> okay, we have some other leaders here who are statewide elected officials. I know that Governor Hewlett Smith was here. Is he still in the room? Where is he? Yes, sir. He, I can tell you from my own personal experience as a young woman and throughout my career, he is a man who has always been very supportive of women leaders. Um, Governor Caperton was invited, but I understand he isn't here tonight. And uh, Governor Underwood is not here tonight. So I'd like to acknowledge a former, another former elected official, and that is Speaker of the House Lou McManus. Is Lou here? Okay, he's just walked out. Sorry. Lou, I can tell you, empowers women quietly by encouraging them to do things they would never have thought of. And also, I saw uh, former Speaker Chuck Chambers. Has he drifted on out? Okay. I'd now like to uh, acknowledge a very, very significant elected official, and that is Margaret Workman. Margaret, where are you? Come on up here, baby. Come on up here. As you know, I mean, you know, she's so shy. She's so shy. This woman represents our first statewide elected official as our first female Supreme Court Justice. We owe so much to her for simply being a role model. And let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you, Margaret. And Daryl McGraw was here, but I believe he's gone on to another uh, reception. There are two other people I'd like to acknowledge if they're here. Is Charlotte Lane here? What about Charlotte Pritt? Okay. Yes, I will. I'm just going to mention that we had two very exciting statewide races that weren't won, but it definitely showed us that women can run great races for governor and for attorney general. And I'd also like to acknowledge Justice Cleckley. Isn't he here? Yes, yes. And please, if I miss anybody, just yell your name out, because if I do, it's just this short organizational time slot we had. I'd like to acknowledge a statewide appointed official or two, and the first is Barbara Harmon Schanberger. Barbara, walk on up here fast, fast, fast. We've got to get to the game. Come on, fast. Okay. 
Barbara is the, has been the hardworking leader as the Secretary of Education and the Arts, and um, her presence as a role model does so many things for us, and in addition, she was WVU's first female Rhodes Scholar, mm -hmm. something that we should be very proud of. Okay, just to move very quickly, I want to mention some other elected officials. Uh, <coughs> Senator Martha Walker. Yay. Martha. Yay. Senator Sarah Minear. Sarah. Yay. Senator Sarah Minear. I didn't see Donna Boley. She'd said yes, but okay, I didn't see her. Okay. And uh, Senator Rusty Webb was here earlier. He is new, but he's a great supporter of women. Delegate, he's not a senator. I mean, delegate, I'm sorry. He's those boys down. Okay. And you just heard from Senator Walker there. I'd like to uh, just ask you to step forward, uh, Senator uh, Delegate Jody Smurl. Delegate Jody Smurl, great leader from Huntington. Delegate Margaret Leach. Chris, Delegate Brian Gallagher called at the last minute. There was a death, and he could not come. Delegate Marge Burke and Delegate Peggy Miller. Chris Peggy Miller. You can't miss Peggy. She has all the beautiful hair. From the universities, we have all sorts of leaders. We have President Hardesty, uh, Susan Hardesty. We have President, President Gilly and Nan Gilly. We have President Carrier and Phyllis Carrier, all of whom are great supporters of women in sports. We have a number of vice presidents. We have Vice President Ed Flowers from West Virginia University. And Betty Cleckley, I, I want you to stand up. This is my colleague from the University of Tennessee back in the olden days when we were both children. This is Vice President Betty Cleckley of uh, Marshall University. She's in charge of global and cultural diversity. Um, we have all sorts of other officials, but I understand the women's coaches are here. Is that right? Are both of them here? Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is ask you to just be aware that we have from the business community Beverly McKinney, one of the few female presidents of a bank. She's the president of a bank down in Huntington. Beverly, where are you? Come on up here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All these shy leaders. Beverly McKinney is president of Bank One, and Phyllis Arnold, who's a trustee, who's also a bank president, sent her regrets. She said she had something much less fun to do. As I introduce the women's coaches, I want to men mention a man who I feel has been working very quietly. And um, thank you, Beverly. They got a picture. Um, and that is someone who's worked very hard on moving West Virginia University's women's program into the next millennium. And that is my old colleague from Varsity Club way back in the olden days. And that's Ed Pastelong, the athletic director of WVU. <laughs> the reason I know how hard he works is he called me when they were searching for the new coach. And he said, we want the best. And we got Pat Head from the uh, University of Tennessee and others involved in helping us search. And with that, he brought Susan Walvius to us. We also have our wonderful coach, Sarah Evans-Moore, who's been with Marshall four years now. Is that right? Fifth year. And um, Sarah Evans-Moore, come on up. And what we're going to do first is we're going to hear from Sarah, and Sarah, if you don't mind, and notice, <laughs> I'm so short and they're so tall. Notice, um, I, I, I want you to notice why I didn't play basketball. <laughs> Could have been a good point. I, that's true, that's true. Sarah is going to tell us a little bit about her background and then basically why she's excited about women's basketball at Marshall. Sarah. Well, I know everybody's in a hurry to get on to the game, so I'm not going to speak very long. But I think it's fantastic that we had this reception tonight with the focus of being of women's sports um, and, and trying to, uh, to improve and to provide more opportunities for women in sports. Uh, I think it's, it's been proven that women in, that participate in sports uh, prosper 
personally so much more than those who do not. I think they're three times more likely to graduate from high school. They're, they're uh, 80 to 90 percent less likely to get involved with drugs and, and uh, teen pregnancies and that sort of thing. And I think that just being involved in women's sports provides tremendous opportunities for the young women. And uh, I think that we need to continue to try to, to provide more opportunities and, and to generate more opportunities for, for the women to get involved. Um, I'm excited to be at Marshall University. We're real excited with the direction that our athletic department is taken under the direction of Lance West and Dr. Gilly. And we feel like that uh, a, lot of, a lot of strides are being made to uh, improve uh, the, the women's, the, the funding and, and all of everything for the women's sports at Marshall University. And uh, we're real excited to be there. Um, I just, like I said before, I think it's tremendous that we're focusing on women's athletics and really trying to get um, some support for that because that's, that's what we need. I think um, young girls are, are interested. I think they just need the opportunity and the encouragement to get involved. And um, I, you know, I think she, uh, Sharon had asked me to say why am I glad to be at Marshall as opposed to someplace else. I'm, I just think Marshall's a great place. I think that Huntington's a great basketball community, and I think that the fans are just terrific. We, we get behind. The university supports us, and we have a great product to sell, and um, I'm just thrilled to be at Marshall. Thank you. I missed one leading university official, Vice President Ann Cavalier from West Virginia Tech, and Vice President Sarah Denman from Marshall. Would both of you let your presence be known? Yell out. Back here, Vice President for Academic Affairs at Marshall. Yes, and uh, where is Ann Cavalier? Okay. All right, uh, one other category of people, I know if you haven't been mentioned, you represent this, and this is folks who support women. I want to mention a family that is exemplary of this. They were brave enough to support a Democrat woman and a Republican woman for office quite visibly in the last election. Now, I call that courage, and they did it with no apology and great enthusiasm. I want to introduce my dear friends and family, the Howards. Yell out here, particularly, particularly Richard, who has been a booster of my career for as long as I can remember. Okay, now let's meet Susan Walvius, coach at West Virginia University. Welcome, darling. I would like to thank Trustee Lord and Trustee Stallings for making this possible. This reception is a, is a great idea, and uh, I think, as Sarah said, it's very important to support your, our older women in sports because our older women in sports, not that, that, that they are that old, but they are the younger, they are the role models for the younger people. And I'd like to introduce some great role models that I have here with me. Talisha Hargis is from Huntington, West Virginia. All the ladies that I'm going to introduce are from West Virginia. Christy Ammons from Morgantown. Christy Lambert, Shinston. Kim Davis from Del Martin. And Rebecca Burbridge is also from Morgantown. These are your future women leaders of West Virginia standing right here before you. I'd also um, like to point out that our cumulative grade point average for our team, and, and again, another benefit of women in sports, you learn real life skills in sports, but our cumulative grade point average is a 3.3 as a team. So not only are we, are we good on the basketball court, but we do a great job in the classroom, and it's important, again, that young girls have young women to look up to and to model themselves after. And I think as our programs become more visible, and we're committed to that, Eddie Passalong is committed to that, President Hardesty is committed to that, and as we, are, we continue to be more visible, younger, younger girls in West Virginia will have young women that are strong leaders to look up to in the state. And, and we are very appreciative of, of you all's support very much. Thank you. I could not be happier 
than what I am at West Virginia. When I took the job at West Virginia, I didn't think there was a better job to be had, and I feel even stronger about that now. Thank you very much again. Thank you for your support. In just a second here, we're going to go cheer the men on. I hope that next year you will watch the full women's basketball game. They play fast break ball. They play the way we used to watch the shorter men before we grew giants, like Jerry West. They play under 30-second shot clock. It is very exciting basketball. And for those of you who care about the bottom line, let me tell you that at the University of Tennessee, where we started a Boost Hers Club for the Lady Vols 20 years ago, it is now a revenue-generating sport. More fans come to see the women play than come to see the men play. We need to have the names Sarah Evans Moore and Susan Walvius on the tip of our tongues. We look forward to having you fill out one of those forms and leave your address with us. It's not going to cost you a penny. We need your energy and your enthusiasm and showing up at ball games and events. Thank you so much for your valuable time tonight. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I would like to introduce some of the folks who were instrumental in supporting the first meeting of the West Virginia Boost Hers Network. To my left is Carolyn Lilly. To my right is Joyce McMillan. Standing immediately beside me is Tom Burns. And in front of me is Sucra, an African drum that I created through a gift from Ola Tunji, who sent the tree to the United States. Sucra called the meeting to order. I'd like to just ask Carolyn first, Carolyn Lilly, why she spent her time and energy supporting this first West Virginia Boost Hers Network meeting. Well, I work for Sharon Lord, and she got me very excited about it. One day I came to work and she said, you won't believe what we're going to do. And since she has taught me very much about women leadership, it was very exciting to me too and to be with, uh, involved in West Virginia University and Marshall was even more exciting for me. So uh, I was more than happy to give up my time to be here tonight. Great, and we thank you because we know you worked hard. And to my right, Joyce McMillan. Joyce, why did you give your time and energy to support this first West Virginia Boost Hers Network meeting? I have always been a very big sports fan, and so it was very easy for me to say yes when Carolyn asked if I'd like to join the team. I have always loved any phase of sports, and I definitely am behind the promotion of female sports in West Virginia. Great, and we want to get a real good shot of her outfit. Would you just step in front of the camera, show them your fingernails, even green fingernails. And to my immediate right is Tom Burns, who is my partner in life who plays many roles and usually gets drafted into them. But quite seriously, Tom, I would like to ask you why you gave your time and energy today, arranging for all sorts of assistance and showing up here tonight. Well, from my personal standpoint, uh, I grew up in an environment where I had the opportunity to participate in athletics and to attend college on an athletic scholarship. And I realized the advantages that that provided to me. So I can see that that opportunity that I had should be available to women as well because they have the same objectives, the same opportunities, the same potential that I had. So I'm pleased to be a part of supporting women's athletics. Well, we're looking forward to seeing a major wave of energy and activity among the folks who attended the reception, the men and the women who are women's leaders and who support women's sports in West Virginia. So I would simply say this is Sharon Lord signing off, but stay tuned for future happenings. Come on, gang.